Hello. The goal of this series is to show one how to take better, more compelling underwater pictures while at the same time minimizing some of the mishaps and mistakes that I have made over the years. Hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and have nice pictures to share with your friends and family. Uh, we're in part eight of the 10 step uh, series here. This is make the best of each dive situation. It's really important during these dive trips, there are so many unpredictable things, wind, weather, current, surf. It's important to be adaptable. And in general, while you might want to take a, a wide angle or macro or find a dolphin, it's good to exploit the dive site's strong points and make the best of each situation. It's also helpful if you can be adaptable and troubleshoot in real time, even during the dive sometimes when some things occur. Some of my more favorable dive sites are snorkeling, shallow dives, low current, um, predictable, repeated dives. Well, we've talked about snorkeling with my kids on specific snorkel vacations, but when I'm on dive trips with my dive buddies, sometimes after the diving is over, when we have a day when we can't dive before we leave, I will spend two or three hours snorkeling uh, on a shallow reef if there's any kind of shore around, okay? Uh, for example, here was a day in Carousel when we were done diving and I got my wide angle lens camera and hopped in the water. I took some pictures of my dive buddies. I found this beautiful trumpet fish at about 10 feet that I was able to dive down and shoot up and get a, a picture with my wide angle lens just using available light. I went under the dock and without a strobe, just my wide angle lens snorkeling, was able to get pictures of a beautiful coral shooting up looking at the waves and the dock above that. Uh, I, shot, I went down with my macro lens and I was able to get uh, with one strobe and my macro lens on my SLR camera a nice barracuda right under the dock snorkeling. And I got a beautiful picture Again, getting under the filefish, only two or three feet of water, right up to the fish, reducing the water column with my wide angle lens. And I got this nice picture of the filefish, and you can see through Snell's window, part of the top side, and that a red color of the, the uh, restaurant, which is blurred. You can see some of the clouds over there. Um, one day I had food poisoning when I was in, uh, in Roatan and I was very disappointed my dive buddies were going on a nice shark dive. I was stuck in my little hut and I decided to get my camera with my wide angle lens, hop in the water and just do some snorkeling with no strobe and just available light. I went under about two or three feet of water and got some interesting pictures of some of the coral and roots in this little lagoon with uh, uh, some of the topside trees available, uh, visible through Snell's window. I even got a self-portrait. I put the camera under the water and got a picture of me above the water with the roots under the water and some of the trees through Snell's window. We had one day where the visibility was so bad I decided to turn my strobes off and yet I was able to get a picture with available light of my wife with a sea robin. You can also use your macro setting and not even have a background. You can have a nice close crop so you cannot see the macro. The visibility in this uh, image was probably five to six feet, okay? Any kind of background would have been just looked like a blizzard with all the little suspended particles. I did a close crop of this scorpion fish portrait and it's a beautiful picture. You can see its eyes and a part of its face. You can't notice the back scatter, okay? I had one trip in the Caymans where toward the beginning of my trip, I flooded both of my strobes for not checking if there was an O-ring on there. I was demoralized, I was shooting JPEGs, not raw, and I couldn't do good white balance. I didn't have a red filter or anything to do good white balance, so I ended up converting all of my pictures to black and white, and I was able to get some decent shots. This is a wide angle shot of a diver with a school of barracudina. I even got some macro shots in relatively shallow depths by using a little higher ISO setting to keep a relatively quick shutter speed and converting it to black and white, I got an interesting shot of the turtle and a close-up shot of the eye of a lobster, which I converted to black and white. One dive, I did not see anything almost, the entire dive. And then toward the end, I had about 15 minutes left on this, uh, when I was uh, doing my safe, uh, I went up to do my safety stop and this little trunk fish started following me around. 
And the, virtually the only decent pictures I got on that whole dive were of this trunk fish. And I decided to work the subject. I took several shots. I got a portrait, an interesting shot of his uh, mouth and eyes, another interesting shot of his eye, and his mouth. So just by concentrating on one simple subject, you're sometimes able to make the best out of an otherwise uh, disappointing situation. If there really is limiting, limited material or poor visibility, you can always just work on shooting abstract, getting into the macro mode, setting your strobes in tight, and just getting close-ups like at this sea star here at the Blue Heron Bridge on a day of poor visibility. Every so often, when in doubt, take a shot. My wife and I, after dinner, were walking down the beach in Maui. We seemed to see a school of eagle rays surfacing near the shore. I ran about a quarter of a mile back to our hotel, grabbed my SLR camera in my Ike Light housing with a dome port, shot available light, no, no, uh, no strobe, literally jumped in the water, and got this shot showing six beautiful uh, eagle rays with the rippled effects uh, right above it. I was ascending from a, a, the Spiegel Grove uh, with my wife. I was in about 30 feet of water. She was about 10 feet below me. It was a day of extraordinary good visibility, and you could see the, the boat at about 100 feet uh, beneath her. You can see the small divers on the boat, on the wreck still. I just fired off a, what I thought was a snapshot, nothing more. Didn't even think twice above it. Turned out to be my favorite picture of the entire dive trip. All right, so this ends this uh, section eight. Make the best of each dive situation. Be adaptable, exploit the dive site's strong points, troubleshoot in real time. And the next one, step nine, is going to be develop your own specialty or special niche. Thank you.